it happened very quickly. The political discourse, at least in the United States, which is what I'm familiar with, perhaps I could say in the English speaking world, has shifted in my adulthood, has shifted from a state where there ostensibly were political positions, I would say myriad political positions on the political spectrum that stood for something and were not just uh, standing against something. I would say that now the political ideologies, I would say that I gravitated toward in my adulthood and I have swung Certainly in my adult life, in my young adulthood, I was def I definitely leaned more to the left in terms of being anti-war. There's something that's against something. Uh, and then in my sort of later adulthood, and especially after I had kids, um, the, the libertarian side of me was more pronounced and forward. A lot of that also being against, again, we've got anti-war, but there still felt as though there was something that I was standing for. Individual liberty, you know, which is still the, the freedom from uh, state oppression, but an idea of, um, you know, don't hurt people and don't take their stuff. Maybe in the positive, that's sort of exclusive, but in the inclusive, more like be a decent person just be a decent person and that the idea was that the exception was against hurting people and taking their stuff and it was a, a personal admonition to just like be a good person pursue a life where you're a good person and the things that i pursued in my life i would say for the most part as a personal in my personal life were pursued not as a reaction to anything fitness health, independent of everyone else, learning, growing in my career and my interests, those were all for me and independent of the outside world. Not doing it to get kudos, not doing it to signal virtue to anyone else, doing it because it made me feel better, more whole, and gave my life meaning. And were you to remove other people, there was no enemy that I was against. When I would go into the gym, it wasn't as a, 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 a battle against some enemy. If anything, it was a battle against myself and my own laziness at times and uh, my own desire to, to do things that were, let's say, negative and a desire to push myself. So if anything, it was a, a battle with my own demons. And that gets me to a concept that I have been, I don't know why I've not wanted to speak about this, but several things have come up that have made me want to discuss this. Something that I have seen, a reason why I have left, let's say the political libertarian scene and why I see that there is a, a rot and a corruption in it, but I see it throughout. I'm seeing it with a lot of my people that I consider to be friends this pattern. And some people will say, oh, this has been going on. I know the comments in the YouTube. Oh, this has been going on. What do you mean it happened quickly? Some of you already put this, right? You didn't even listen this far. You've already commented on this. Don't delete it. Just leave it. Oh, no, this has been going on. What are you talking about? This has been going on for decades. It's always been this way. You're just noticing. No, 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 it's not that. It happened fast enough that we can have that 2020 hindsight and look back, but still it's going to catch a lot of people unawares. And I see a lot of people already falling into it, smart people. And what they're falling into is they're falling into a trap. They're falling into a trap of what I'm going to call reactionary nihilism. That's like the far end of it, where you would think nihilism, nihilism can't be reactionary. The idea that, oh, I just want the world to, to burn. Some men just want to watch the world burn. There's a lot of that. And that seems to be coming from what is, what is labeling itself as the right. I'm not really comfortable with 
the idea that it's the right uh, because I don't think that this is a right left thing. I think that they are two slides royal path here. There are two slides down to the same place and that same place is hell. They are basically the the flip side of the famous meme of the woman screaming no. No, kneeling on the ground after Trump was elected. No, no. And I remember at the time thinking, yeah, Trump's, you know, whatever. He's kind of goofy or whatever. But like, man, that's over the top. But that's the way that I see people reacting to drag queen story hour. Right. Which has actually less power over you than Trump. Is it degenerate? Absolutely. 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 And then they bring up, oh, you know, these teachers diddling kids. They're all 200 teachers arrested, you know, over out of 3 million or something like that over the last month. And it's like, okay, yeah, but that's been going on. It's not like there weren't always stories of, you know, the teacher sleeping with the students and arrested. That's been going, again, been going on forever. And it was never some big thing to make hay about. It was never something that you could virtue signal about. At most, people would joke, like, oh, because it was always an attractive teacher. Oh, I wish my teacher, you know, my hot math teacher would have tried to hit on me. For better or worse, that was people's reaction to it. But now what I see happening is these people are moving because they're looking for something. And they're getting a lot of attention around reacting to degeneracy. But the question that I ask you is, Who are you serving with this? What are you serving? One of the biggest revelations for me, and one of the reasons why I, as I was already moving and finding orthodoxy, one of the reasons that I had such a sense of urgency of getting into the church was that before my first conversation with the priest who would become my spiritual father, Father Turbo Qualls, Before our first conversation, when I had asked him, hey, Father, you know, I've been praying and could we maybe, could you maybe talk to me a little bit about improving my prayer? And he said, here's a talk that I gave. Father Turbo said this. Here's a talk that I gave. Please watch this first because this is going to shape the entire scope of our relationship moving forward. And I've quoted the the verse that that this is based on, but it was, he was talking about powers and principalities, the powers, and what that means in this talk that he had given from, I believe, 2018, something like that. And it's, of course, referencing Ephesians 6, 12, where St. Paul says, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. 2,000 years ago, 2,000 years ago, this is written. It hasn't changed. When you rail against drag queen story hour, you are not railing against drag queens. When you rail against the, the degener- whatever the degeneracy of today is, when you rail against the wokes, you are not railing against the people. Furthermore, you're not stopping by railing against the wokes. You are not combating what it is that they represent. I even see now that, uh, you know, in trying to bring this up and by introducing this term, the church of woke, I even see now people using the church of woke to still, they don't get it. (laughs) They think it's because they don't understand what a church is. And that's my bad. They think that Church of Woke is like some institution of men. It's not. It's powers and principalities. These people are just playing out a spiritual reality. They are just representatives possessed by the demons, the rulers of the darkness of this world. And you railing against them, the people doesn't stop the demons. As a matter of fact, the demons would love for you to even go and kill all of those people. They they hate 
they hate mankind. The demons hate the drag queen doing the story hour. This is important. The demons hate, right, the, the, the gay orgies that are spreading the monkeypox. The demons hate the people doing that. That's why they get them to do it. Because they hate them. Because they hate mankind. They hate them as much as they hate you. They are leading them to their destruction. And you believe that you railing against it is either one, going to stop them from doing it, or two, you're doing it so that because they want what? They want you to become a degenerate? They want your children to become a degenerate? No, not necessary. Not necessary at all. Their degeneracy is your trap. See, they've already got you. Because if you will hate the drag queens, the drag queen story hour, if you will hate whatever you consider to be degenerate, if you will hate the people, then you've become an icon of the demons. You've done what they want you to do. This is the royal path. The drag queen story hour has fallen off to the left. You've fallen off to the right. Your hate, your anger, you're spending more time focused on the left, focused on the degenerates, than those who defend the degenerates publicly, whatever, right? spend thinking about the degenerates. Now, those same people know that they're degenerates. They don't have them around their kids. They don't have them in their house. But you're their political enemy. They're going to let you never interrupt your enemy when he's making a mistake. Because the more you hate, the more they can expose you as hateful. The more they can represent you as hateful. And so... What do you do? Because and one of the reasons that I'm, I'm, I'm doing this video that I'm speaking about this is because in one of my private groups, a woman said that um, she had been having some conversations with a young man who had started to fall into nihilism, got married, had a kid, started to find some meaning in his life, but said that he's having problems leaving, let's say, the libertarian scene which is mostly online at this point. Nobody's actually going and doing anything. But live, leaving that because of the degen because he was against degeneracy. And people think, well, if you don't stand against it, it'll just continue. And what are you going to do? And I say, but you can't stand against a demon. You never could. You, as a human being, can't stand against the powers, the rulers of darkness of this world. What you can do is you can move closer to that and he, the person who actually can defeat those demons and proved it when he was here on earth. If anything, you need to take yourself to him and you need to take those who are sick, those who are infested with demons to him to be healed. And he's the only way. You, you can't fight. You have to fight a demon with angels. And they're there. But you can't be a part of the fight. You can't manifest that on earth. You can't be the vehicle for that battle to take place on earth if you don't purify yourself. And that brings me to this. This is why the demons are happy with you reacting. The demons are happy with you reacting because I want you to take your ideology, whatever it is that's moving you politically right now, and I want you to imagine that you are not where you are. No internet, no phone, alone, monastery, a hermit on a mountain. You're not going to encounter people for 20 years from now. How useful is that ideology of yours to you? How useful is that ideology of yours to you for your salvation in that moment? 
for meaning in your life at that moment, it's useless. There is no drag queen story hour when you are on the top of a mountain by yourself for the next 20 years and not going to encounter another soul. There's none of that. But yet, but yet, monasticism of that type has been part of Orthodox Christianity for thousands of years, perhaps the most important part. Because hierarchs are drawn from monastics many of whom have been solitary for a period of time. Throughout history, so many of the saints are living hermit lifestyles, have been ascetics struggling. Christianity, Christ, the goal of purification of yourself is valuable regardless of time, place, person. It's there. We all are struggling with our demons. Once we move out of the world, what we start to notice is those demons don't go away. You think it's in someone else. It's in you. It's in us. It's in me. <laughs> That's what I'm struggling with. And even my own, I, this is what I've been convicted of. This is why I'm doing this. Convicted as in Christ, the Holy Spirit, in prayer, letting me know that even my own reaction to these things is pulling me away from God. Because it's my own, my own demons that I need to be dealing with, rather than trying to convict others. As, as I'm convicting others, as I'm reacting to their degeneracy, I can't do that and at the same time have my, find my own salvation, heal myself. This is the, the idea of, you know, don't worry about the speck in your brother's eye before you remove the, the log in your own, the plank in your own. And mind you, yeah, Drag Queen Story Hour, that's a plank. But you've got plenty of planks yourself, as do I. We've got about two years. This next presidential election is going to throw this into high gear. We've seen what this looked like in the past, where reactionaries gain control. The problem with reactionaries, we saw this almost 100 years ago now, but we've seen it many, many times. The problem when reactionaries come into power is they come into power on the basis of fighting against enemies. And then they go about eliminating those enemies. And when those enemies are eliminated, because their ideology doesn't stand without enemies, they go out and find new enemies. And eventually, eventually, everyone is an enemy, even the reactionaries themselves, even the elite of those reactionaries. So becoming an elite, this elite theory, becoming an elite reactionary, it just means you're last in line if you're lucky. You might be one of the first if you fall personally out of favor with someone who used to be your friend, you might be one of the first to go. So the answer, if you want this to end, the answer is not to fight a culture war. The answer is to fight spiritual warfare. That begins in your heart. That begins with your prayer. That begins with your move toward your purification. That's the only way that you're going to be able to get out of the trap.